Welcome, welcome to our worship. As we acknowledge that the land upon which we reside is Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of the Cree peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. May we live with respect upon the land and in friendship and reconciliation with our neighbours. Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Provident God, with the prayer your son taught us always on our lips, help us so to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, and so to knock that the door of mercy may be opened for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Hosea. When the Lord first, first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take for yourself a wife of Ordom, and have children of Ordom, for the land commits great Ordom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and he took Gorma, daughter of Biblam, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Judah for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Luhuraham, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have pity on the house of Judah and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lohoroma, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Nay him, Lo, am I, am me, for you are not my people and I am not your God. Yet the number of people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be either neither measured nor numbered, and in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, it shall be said to them, children of the living God. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven all the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what you, Lord God, are saying, for you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Lord, you will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. God of grace, you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son to be our Savior. Help us to rejoice in our salvation by showing mercy and truth, and by walking in the way of righteousness and peace. We ask this in Jesus' name, and for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank <clears throat> you.
a reading from the letter of the Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you are taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were, you were circumcised with the spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of flesh in the circumcision, for circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the, the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over all of them. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on safe self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows with a growth growth that is from god holy word holy wisdom thanks be to god the lord be with you and also with you the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Sup suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. 
and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our loving parent, Jesus, the risen Christ, and the Holy Spirit, our comfort and guide. Amen. This morning, I would like to invite you to ponder something for a moment, to ponder on a person in your life who you are very close to, the one who knows all your secret thoughts, the one who holds your confidences, the one who can point out your blind spots and be brutally honest with you when it is needed. This one is the one you trust above anyone else, the one you go to for wisdom or advice or counsel. Do we all have someone in mind? You can just nod your heads. Do we all have someone in mind? That very trusted person. So hold on to that person in your mind. We'll hold them there for a moment with gratitude for who they are for you. This special relationship, this closeness is the same kind of relationship that God wants to have with each of us. This intimate, trusted closeness is so important to God that when asked how to pray, Jesus' default is to talk about prayer in terms of relationship. Jesus invites us in this teaching not to consider how to pray the right way or in the right place or at the right time or using the right words. Rather, Jesus invites us into deeper relationship with God, the one who hears us when we speak in silence. In the Jewish culture in Jesus' day, the most important and intimate relationship was between fathers and their children, fathers and their sons. But this was not the way that it was with the Gentiles. Fathers in the Greco-Roman culture enjoyed complete control over their children and grandchildren. It was a father who decided, for example, whether his newborn child would be raised in the family or sold or even killed. So in this teaching of the Lord's Prayer in Luke's Gospel, it's helpful for us to keep in mind, Luke is sharing Jesus' teaching to a Gentile audience, to ones who might not have a loving, nurturing, caring, close relationship with their fathers. So as Jesus teaches about prayer, Luke gives emphasis on this relationship, offering that God is generous, loving, and attentive to God's children's needs. But this fatherly parental relationship with God differs greatly from the experience of most of the Gentiles this idea was very foreign that a father could be loving and caring and nurturing. Jesus' teaching then breaks into the harsh reality of what fatherhood could mean. Jesus offers a new possibility and a kind of grace that was unheard of. There is a father who is not controlling and not dominating, not abusive and not dismissive. God is a father unlike any father they had ever known. And God the Father in the New Testament 
is a personal, intimate, sacred, and trusted authority. But there certainly would have been a lot of tension and even questioning or rejecting this idea at first. It would have been shocking for the Gentiles to hear Jesus saying that they needed to pray to God the Father. And maybe it feels that way for us too. The idea of God as Father has made some uncomfortable. This has not always been a good relationship, perhaps. And certainly in our patriarchal culture, God as father has been used to abuse and subjugate women and any images of the divine feminine seen as suspicious and rejected. So we might understand how Luke's audience might have heard this message the first time. Now, I'm not suggesting that we have to use father as an identifier for who God is. The most important thing here is what Jesus is talking about in terms of the relationship. The relationship with God, who is a trusted, loving, caring, and nurturing parent. This is the relationship God has with us. So we are not limited in our naming of God as Father. It is the way Jesus taught because of the relationship of fathers and sons in his culture. This brings us back to our most trusted relationship in our lives. And if you consider that person and the qualities that you admire in them and that makes them the trusted person for you, the reason you rely on them, the reason you share the most intimate details of your life with them, this is what Jesus is talking about in that trusting relationship that God has with us. We can turn to God as father, as mother, as parent, as that most trusted one in our lives, and God will be there for us. God is so much in it with us, Jesus says, that we can ask anything anything without shame, without hesitation, and God will listen and hear us. God cares for us so much that God is always here and accessible and available to us. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given. This is what it is to be in relationship with God. Jesus breaks open all the possibilities of this relationship, helping us to see God in this new light, to see God as the one who we can go to with everything, with heartbreaks, with joys, when we need counsel and wisdom, for this is one we can trust more than anyone. And in this is our good news today that God's faithfulness, God's confidence, God's trustworthiness is like that of the most trusted person in our lives, and even more so. God as friend, grandparent, confidant, mother or father, all of these images hold true, for we know that God is above and beyond even those names that we give to God, the Holy One of Israel. God, beyond our understanding or comprehension, chooses to be with us, chooses to be in relationship with us, and wants to save us from all that would separate us from God. God frees us, delivering us from sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, we are forgiven and freed and united in that most intimate of relationships with God, the creator of all that is seen and unseen. My friends in Christ, God listens and hears you. God provides all we need. God forgives. God protects. God expects us to be generous to one another. 
Prayer is ultimately intimacy with God. As parent, as father, as mother, as that most intimate relationship, that closest relationship in your life, in the best sense of what a parenting relationship could be. Now we know that not everyone has a good, healthy, stable, or loving relationship with their parents, which what is what makes what Jesus sets out to do here even more powerful for us and even more imperative. If we do not have parents like this, then guess what? God is that parent for us. The one we wished for when family dysfunction or abuse or alcoholism or addiction took over. God is that parent for us, the one who looks out for us, who watches over us, who is concerned for us, who provides for us, who wishes the best for us. When we are suffering, when we are ill, when we are confused, when we've lost our way, when we feel disconnected and alone, and without a place to turn, God gives us belonging and a place to turn. When it feels like the world is upside down, and I don't know about you, but it's starting has felt that way for a while for me, the world is upside down and things are changing around us all the time with so much that is unpredictable and so many worries and fears that can grab hold of us and just take over. We have a trusted, loving parent who is not giving up on us and not giving up on this world. God does not abandon us, but God holds us even closer, cradling us as a babe, offering comfort and peace and reassurance. God is a parent for us who invites us into a close, intimate relationship who nurtures that connection, who listens when we ask anything. We can audaciously and shamelessly ask because the word for persistent in the Greek here is actually shamelessly. Shamelessly, we can ask and ask and ask, and we can expect and anticipate God to answer because God wants the best for us. And because God wants us to have the fullness of human experience of life and grace, abundance and joy in the deepest sense of what that can look like in our lives. God responds in love and grace over and over and over and over again. God gets us through the hard times. God is a parent unlike any earthly parent with us and for us today and tomorrow and always. So let us be bold then in our prayer for the bond that connects disciples with God is more vital than friendship. It is familial and intimate. This relationship invites believers to persist in prayer. Let us be bold and persistent in our prayer, knowing and trusting that God loves us even more than an earthly parent, that God's goodness and graciousness exceeds any expectations in our imaginings of that most trusted relationship in our lives. Jesus stresses this, affirming that God gives an even better gift to God's children, the gift of the Holy Spirit. By referring to the Holy Spirit, Luke is preparing his audience for his second volume of writing in the book of Acts, where the Holy Spirit anoints the disciples. We have been anointed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever in our baptism. In those waters and by the word, we become children of God to the most ideal, loving, trustworthy parent of all, and we give thanks to God. Let us pray. Holy God, parent of all, 
We admit that we often turn from you when all you wish to do is call us home to your loving embrace. Turn us from all our shame, guilt, and sin so that we may live into the fullness of relationship with you, the one who loves us beyond anything we can comprehend. We thank you, Father God, Mother God, Parent God, Blessed One, the one who is home for our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. An affirmation of faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, you are with us as we gather in your name to worship. Hear your word, give thanks, pray and share in Christ's supper. Nurture us as a parent, your child, that we may, that we continue to grow in love and trust of you, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Creator God, all you have made is good, yet we do not care for it as we ought. We pray for the places where the creation suffers, Spain, Portugal, British Columbia, and those suffering from extreme heat in Great Britain and Europe. We lift before you before your creatures under threat of extinction, especially bees and monarch butterflies. God of grace, hear our prayer. Mother God, nurture us in our faith. Give wisdom and discernment to the bishops who are convened for the Lambeth Conference. Guide their conversation and decisions and be with the Christian church throughout the world, that we may listen and do your will. God of grace, hear our prayer. Praying God, as Christ taught us to pray, so help us to live in your ways and your truth. Be with all preparing for the visit of Pope Francis. Inspire honest conversation, reconciliation, healing, and peace. We pray also for the people of Ukraine and Sri Lanka for your peace and an end to violence and war. God of grace, hear our prayer. Healing God, bring your healing grace upon all who are ill or in any need, especially Catherine and Glenn Ash. Chris Atkins, Ed and Joan Diesel, Mark Sharion, Joanne Duernichuk, Aniko and Victor Mateus, John Moore, Linda Popkin, Karen Wright, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts now. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, we lift these prayers and all the prayers of our hearts to you, the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God of Israel, may this day be one of fulfillment and peace. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Teach us to love others as you have loved us. Holy One, 
hear and have mercy. Fill the world with your peace and justice. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Renew the church through the power of your life-giving spirit. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Source of light, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen.